Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you here where we can all worship together. Um, a few announcements here I've been given. Uh, March 4th is going to be our next soup and sandwich. I believe that means Scott's going to be here. March 3rd. 3rd. March 3rd. And Scott will be here to do communion. And Scott will be here to do communion. And there's a sign-up sheet in the back for people who want to volunteer to do a soup or sandwich or dessert. We appreciate all the offerings you make. And we uh, you know we're going to enjoy the food and the fellowship. Um, let's see, the other thing was that uh, we're going to start a script program again in March. So we just wanted to put it out there so you can be thinking about it. Which uh, which ones were the ones that, places you're going to spend money anyway. We, we sure appreciate using the script program and it helps bring some money into the church. So, um, I believe, I can't think of any other except Judy has one. You still want to speak about that um, program? Oh, the, yeah. the, the mission for the uh, bridal shower? Yes. Um, we received a letter it's on but I don't think it's working we received a letter um, from community action and they're having a baby shower community baby shower and um, what that's for is to um, give to mothers or babies that don't have resources that don't have enough money um, to help them with, with the things they need up to six months of age. So um, Homo and I are going to participate in this with some things and we'd be willing if anyone else would like to bring in something, it has to be new, but if you'd like to bring something in for a baby um, from zero to six months old, that we would be glad to gather that and take that to community action and look at. And, and that's the baby shower actually can happen in May, so you can bring it anytime this month, next month, we'll be fine. But we're going to participate in that. We are, and if anyone wants to join us, that would be great. Thank you. That's a wonderful message. Chuck, a couple other things. Uh, the Secretary of State is actually going to be coming to the Senior Center coming, so if you have business to do with the uh, Secretary of State, there's a poster up on the back of the Fulton Board. And also, uh, there was a person that contacted me about heating assistance, and they would have to contact Superior Watershed for that. Okay. That's so if you know anybody that is low income that needs help with heating assistance, contact Superior Watershed. Yeah. And they can also help with wood, as I understand. Correct. Any type of wood. And if they fail, I've had experience with a friend who also got wood through St. Vinny's for heating assistance, so there's, there's help out there, but yeah, we're steering the community action first. And Darcia has something for us. Judy and I were here at the church working on a slide presentation for today, and there was somebody that entered and said hello. He turned out to be the state inspection person for our lift. And so I'm glad we were here. It was a surprise inspection and we were surprised that somebody was here for him. And But the good news is uh, he said that the installation of our lift was done by the manufacturer and that saw uh, no leaks whatsoever, nothing that would have been out of the ordinary. In fact, he said that it was in superb shape yes. and that we have a great deal of confidence in, you know, for people who use our lift and just because it has been here a long time, you can feel secure and safe in knowing that our lift services and uh, is safe and going to be working for a long time in the future. That's good news. <laughs> well, uh, our Lenten services start with the Lutheran Church. That's right. This week, 515 
at the Lutheran Church, there's soup and bread at 515 and the services at 6. Please contact Tucker I if you need a ride. And we'll see what we can figure out. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> all right, well, if that's all, I think we'll take time now to prepare our hearts for worship and we'll listen to the prelude that Jane has for us. season, we draw near to you. O oh God, we seek your face. As we study your word to better know you. O oh God, we seek your mind. As we recognize we often fall short of what you would have us be. O oh God, we seek your grace. As we see we are dust and our lives are found in you. O oh God, we seek your spirit. As we realize our weakness, <coughs> O oh God, we seek your strength. As we strive to be your hands and feet in a world which so needs you, O oh God, we seek your guidance. As we search for your lost sheep, O oh God, we seek to develop hearts like your heart. As we encounter the suffering and trials of this world, O oh God, we seek your comfort. And together, O oh God, oh God, walk with us through this season of spiritual growth. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to receive your messages, that we may become more like you. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Uh, now, if you join us in our first hymn, which is Open Our Eyes, in 2086, in the faith we sing. You may stand. Yeah. <laughs> 
I find it easy to sing. <laughs> For you, I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sin of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. Remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Well, now this is the point in our service where we bring our our joys and our concerns to the Lord. So I would, uh, I'm going to let you guys go first because somebody might already have more information about the one that I heard about this morning than I have. But uh, has anybody got anything? Jane? I'd like to thank, thank uh, God that my shoulder has gotten better and that it keeps getting better. And I have an eye appointment in Escanaba tomorrow that. Uh, so hopefully the macular degeneration has not many worse. Yeah. So I have some prayers for that. That's a good one. And yeah, Jane, for who couldn't hear, hear uh, Jane is thankful that her shoulder is feeling better and uh, we're praying for a good result when she sees a doctor this week. That uh, her macular degeneration has not gotten any worse. Any better. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Just great for my mom. My mom had a RSV shot yesterday and had an allergic reaction to it. So keep her in prayer space. Uh, any others? We got a joy to have Sweet Alice help us light the candles this morning. Yeah. For my sister in law and her family, she's in hospital right now, but will be coming home sometime this week under hospice care. jump in and if there are no others I don't know much about the situation but I've heard this morning from Billy um, that Don is going to be getting out of ICU I think he got out yesterday he got out yesterday but we don't know that much about the situation there was something found with his heart and they may be looking at a snit Don <coughs> Bedwell oh I'm sorry not a pacemaker. A pacemaker, I'm sorry. So see, pass the message around and gets messed up. <laughs> and Sally has another thought down prayer. This message request for prayer concern came in on the phone this last week and I happened to answer it and intended to pass that on by paper to Chuck and Ben. So, you'll remember Elizabeth Plazat and further the accident that happened maybe 10 days ago where a Subaru ended up down in Lake Superior and had to get hit from behind. That was Elizabeth's daughter. And she was injured in the accident and at the time that Elizabeth, that Elizabeth called the prayer request in, the daughter was in the ear of that place. <clears throat> Any others? I would just um, say a joy of seeing everyone this morning. It's funny how the week goes by, you know, and you see a few people, a few people here and there. It's so wonderful to come to church and, and see our friends. Yes, it is nice. <laughs> um, pray for me this week as I prepare this message for next week yes. and um, it's a joy I'm feeling much better than it was last week and uh, yesterday when I was at my mom's cleaning I set up her smart TV so she could watch my great nephew's talking in Minnesota she was thrilled <laughs> she loves watching her kids that's a joy Oh, Darsha has something. She has a mic. I just wanted to also remember Gail uh, and uh, Don, as well as Paul, in our prayers. Yeah, I'd like to add a joy. I should. She reminded me. I should. I'm feeling much better this week, also. You all know and you prayed for me. Thank you for the prayers. I got through a surgery pretty well. A little bit of rough recovery at first. But it gave me perspective that I feel very good now. <laughs> so you look pretty good too, Chaka. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm I'm still on restrictions. I feel good enough that I have to keep reminding myself that I'm still on restrictions. You can't fall, I can't lift anything over 15 pounds, those sort of things. So if you see me reaching for something, feel free to say, "Are you sure?" <laughs> Anything else? Cool. I have a joy that Steve has a birthday this coming Saturday. Oh, yay! Oh. <laughs> Should we take the occasion to sing? Always. Let's do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear.
Um, all right, then. Now, Father, we lift up our prayers to you. We lift the, our loved ones into your concerning arms. Thank you for hearing our concerns and our joys. We know you are already caring. And now we've united with you through prayer. We give glory to you as we pray as your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now <coughs> is the time we collect our offering and have our, our cushions come forward. Thank you very much. After you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again be 
become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on this earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter 3, 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Darsha and I are going to share a special song that um, Darsha wanted to sing today. Actually, uh, this was my mom's favorite hymn. And uh, during her last days, she could be heard just singing the chorus. And it was so wonderful and uplifting. And it's always been a favorite of mine, so I felt like it would be great to share with you today. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine! Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Watching and waiting, look 
king above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Sometimes these things are called miracles. They're miracles, they're messages, they're signs. But I believe if they're recorded in here, they're signs for all of us, and they're, they're meant to teach us something. So I'm, I've taken a lot of, of a look at signs this week. God's shown me many things, and it's wonderful when you prepare your sermon because you get messages <laughs> and signs from God. It's just wonderful. 
But um, I realized a couple things. There's, there's different kinds of messages. There's, there's those big messages. And then there's messages that are maybe aimed at a specific people, like the messages he sent to Israel. Exodus is full of messages if you want to, and signs. And if, uh, if you want to study those signs, read through Exodus, because they're just one after another, and I won't be able to hit them all. I'm not going but, to. Uh, but they're recorded in God's words, and they're not only for his people Israel, they're also to teach us certain things about him. And then there's signs, messages that he sends just to an individual. And that's what I want to get to, is how we can see him in our lives if we remember to look every day and believe that he's there and he wants to speak to us. So, I, I started thinking, okay, signs, they have many reasons, many purposes. That started. Because God's sort of called me to be a sign maker in recent years, and some of you may know what I'm talking about, and some of you may not, and that's sort of, I can, I can make all sort of out of that. So I'm not going to talk about that today because it's not about me or what's happened to me today, except for a few examples I'll give you later. But I'm going to talk first about the purposes, the reasons, the, the messages that God has in his signs. Now you'll see from my chart, I tried to narrow it down to categories. You can probably read the big ones. Those are my main categories that I felt. But a whole lot more stuff came to me, and I realized that this is too many. But as I looked at them, I realized, well, they relate, all the other things that are like attributes of God relate to one of these different categories. So what I'm going to do, I know you can't read the small letters, I'm going to read down through them just real quick, just to sort of give you an idea of where I was, and I'm going to read the ones you can't see on the side and show how they relate. And it's interesting because it's kind of a transitional thing as it goes from his power and his character and it goes into his caring and the fact that you can trust him. And so here's, here's what I have, and the biggest signs of all. Say that he is, he, he says, I am. And those signs show his presence. And those type of signs also come to us. Those, we can get little messages that tell us about his presence. The next category is his power. Over to the side, I have his deity, his glory, his holiness, which starts to bring me into his character. Then there's his goodness, his forgiveness, his salvation, which starts to bring me into his provision, his care, his blessings, his direction, which he provides, and leads me into his leading. It's just kind of funny how it just kind of went down like this. His guidance, his calling. Some of them are, are signs of calling, and we'll talk about some of those. His confirming his call. <clears throat> Sometimes when you're called, you're not sure. I'll give you an example of someone who asked for signs to confirm that he, of what he was hearing. And his comfort. These, these are all getting into the category of his assurance. And finally, his trustworthiness and his steadfastness. And next to that, I have, he's a keeper of covenants. He makes covenants and he keeps his promises. And he shows us by signs that he does this. I'm going to go through some signs from his word. And we'll see how they fit into some of these different categories. So I thought the best place to start would be at the beginning creation, right? The biggest sign of all is to everybody. It's been here since the beginning of creation. It's there for everyone to see and it's plain for us to see. It shows his power. It shows he is God. There is a God. It shows he is because it's there. So let's read what it says in his word about this. I like Romans 1.20. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, 
namely his eternal power and deity, has been clearly perceived in the things that have been made. Well, Paul's saying anybody should be able to walk outside and look at the beauty and the amazing complexity of the things that he's made and know there has to be God. I believe that my whole life. And I won't get into the arguments over science. Because <laughs> I thought, oh, I could go on there for a while and chase a rabbit. But anyway, uh, I also liked Psalm 19.1, and that's why I thought it was Psalm 19. <laughs> we had a little misunderstanding about which psalm we were reading today, because I had 19 on my head. I like this one. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. It shows his craftsmanship. It shows the intricacy of the things he can make. And it just speaks of his appreciation for beauty. And that he's given it to us. It's so amazing. I'm going to move on. Like I said, there's a lot of them in Exodus. And I'm going to go through them kind of quick because they're not really the point of my message. But they do serve the examples. So as I went through Exodus, and I have to skip over some because there's so many. But the first one I have always liked is the burning bush. God comes to Moses in a burning bush and speaks to him. And he says, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground because he was in the presence of God. That says I am. He says I am. And um, it shows his holiness. It shows that he's God. And it's a sign of calling because he's calling Moses to do something for him. And he's leading him and he will prepare him. As we move through Exodus, we get to the plagues. Well, when Moses did what God told him, and he went and told, Mo told uh, Pharaoh, let my people free, Pharaoh said, who is this God? I don't know him. Well, the plagues were God's sign to Pharaoh. I'm God, you're not. I have the power, your gods are nothing. And it was also a sign to his people that he would take care of them. He would, he would uh, free them. It's his power, his deity, and his provision. And after we get to the end of the plagues, we have the Passover, which is a miracle. It's a sign. It's a prophecy. It shows that he will provide salvation. And it's a picture of salvation. It's a picture of how he works Christ, the blood, the lamb, there's so much symbolism in there. There's so many lessons in that for us. When they left town, <laughs> Pharaoh probably said, okay, get out of here. They were led by a pillar. A pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. This is a sign that God will provide. He will lead. He will show them the way to go. Then, well, there was the parting of the Red Sea. It shows his power and his protection. Well, then they moved on into the wilderness. And I like this one. I always love this one. One of the first places they came was Mara, which had the bitter waters. They were thirsty. They were in the desert. They were thirsty. And the first water they hit, they couldn't drink it. But God told Moses, take this tree and throw it in the water. Bitter waters were purified by a tree. You see the symbolism there? To the Hebrew people, the, the tree was long a symbol of, possibly it came after this, but this could be a pre-shadowing. The tree was a word that they used for the method of putting someone up on a piece of wood and hanging them in the sky to die a torturous death. But he told, you know, so he told Moses to throw a tree in the water and it purified the water and it made the water sweet. It's a picture of salvation, his cleansing, his ability to cleanse and restore. Uh, the next place they went was Elam, which was in the wilderness of Sin. They came to an oasis that had lots of water. They were hungry. And they complained to God. And they murmured against Moses. And God was forbearing, it shows his forbearance, put up with them, and he gave them manna. And when they wanted meat, he gave them quail. Again, this shows his provision. 
just that he will take care of them and they can trust him. And of course, later there's water from the rock when they moved on and they went to the rock of Horeb and they received water from the rock, which is a picture of Christ. So, yeah, you can see how those, how his signs have many different purposes, but they're all meant to teach us something. I'm going to sort of skip over, although I, I realized there were a few more. I, as I went along, I realized there's, there's some signs that are signs of his authority, sign of his judgment, and that he will judge those who stand against him. He's, he's patient. But, you know, there were those that fell dead in the wilderness. There was, there was judgment. And what this made me think of is sometimes in our personal signs, we will have messages of conviction. You may have had it. You may have said something when you're frustrated or angry, said something to someone you love, and, and felt that twist in your gut. That's the Holy Spirit convicting you. So little signs will convict us, but he's shown some big signs that he has the right to judge us. Uh, I guess in the, I like to look at a few in the New Testament. There's from the scripture we read today from Mark, there's the Spirit descending on Christ like a dove. It shows his confirming that Christ is his messenger and he approves of him. And it shows his presence with him. Then there's the crucifixion and the resurrection. That's, that's one of the big ones we hang on to. It's, it's, it's our promise. It's, it's our assurance that everything's going to be okay. That he's in control and he has a plan and he will be <coughs> Anyway, that's, that's some of the larger ones. I'm going to speak, I have one more, and it's going to speak more to the types of messages God gives us to us as individuals. And I'm using this also because there's another example on a more personal level. But you can read about Gideon. Some of you will remember the story of Gideon in Judges 6, where the Israelites had, had angered God they had gone after other gods. They had not lived according to his law. And he had turned them over to the Midianites and the Amalekites. And they were basically going around. Every time they planted a crop, they'd tear it up. They killed their cattle. They just generally messed with them. They wanted to drive them out of there. God had put them in one of the sweetest spots for crops and raising animals and everything. And I think they wanted them out of there. The angel of God came to Gideon. Who many theologians say the angel of God is the pre incarnated Christ, a picture of him, if not him. And he came to Gideon and he said, You're my man. I want you to lead the armies of Israel against these people. We're going we're gonna to make them leave you alone, in other words. But um, he said, I'm the smallest man in the smallest tribe. Me? Are you sure? Well, if this is true, let me let me make an offering to you. So he said, stay here. And he went in and he got some food and things that he brought it out on the altar that he had. And he put it before him. I think he poured gravy over it. Just to make sure. Kind of a picture of uh, what Elijah did. When he soaked the sacrifice and then got kicked down and burned it up anyway. The angel of the Lord touched it with his staff. And the offering just burned up. You think that'd be enough, right? Well, Gideon got the army together and they were ready to go to battle, but he still had some fear in him. He said, God, if, if you have delivered them into my hands, would you give me this sign? I'm going to put a fleece out on the threshing floor. And in the morning, if it's soaking wet and everything else is dry, that'll be a sign to me. Next morning it was so. He needed more. <laughs> because if you know the story, and then he said, okay, God, don't be angry with me. One more time, let me put the fleece out, 
let the fleece be dry and everything around it be wet. God did that. <laughs> so it shows this shows that God's patient. <laughs> and he will call you and he will confirm his call if he wants to. <laughs> he does have the choice. So I like this one because as God comes near to each of us, you know, and this is what I want to say to you today is that in little ways we can see God's confirmation that that he's there for us, he'll comfort us, he'll, he'll lead us into acts of service. And one of the reasons I like to use this one is because I have a personal example of the sign. Now, um, the kind of things that we often look for and we share with our believing friends, the Emmaus community had a meeting. Um, Billy hosted a, a meeting here of our Emmaus group. <coughs> Our numbers are dwindling. We haven't been able to get walks going. People are getting busy with other things. So not very many people showed up. Well, we have been talking about the fact that, well, there's not very many, but we can, many of us, but we can still do things. And of course, that week, I'm pretty sure I heard a sermon about how God uses unlikely people. And um, all this was working on my head and my heart when it was over. The lady was cleaning up in the kitchen, and we were the last two here, and I came up to her and I said, we're small, but we're mighty, like Gideon. And we had a nice conversation about how God uses the least likely us, right? And uh, it, it was really neat. And, and that's the kind of thing where sharing signs when you see them with others helps to build your faith and helps to build their faith. I heard a sign yesterday from someone. We were speaking in front of other people, and I realized that they're listening too. They hear us confirming things about our faith. How might that work on their hearts? It's an opening for God. But anyway, um, I went home that night and I, I felt good about the meeting. I felt good about the fellowship. But got up in the morning and I opened my upper room. Now, uh, those who read the, the upper room, have heard this many times. You know, you'll be going through something. There'll be something laid on your heart. You'll get up. You'll open the upper room and go, this is for me. This was written for me. I gotta bring this out again. There's your sign. <laughs> Some of you might remember Jeff Foxworth when I stole this. <laughs> so, but anyway, here was my sign. I opened it up and the reference was to Gideon. So the next time I saw Billy, I said, you know what we talked about, what we said the next morning? Guess what was in the upper room? Now, those are the kind of things we feed each other, build each other up, build up our faith. And that's, that's the kind of thing I want you to think about looking for and sharing with others because it, it increases all our faith. Oh, I guess here's another one I like. Kath can confirm this one of a personal nature. We choose, often choose the songs special music to go with the theme of the service. We start, of course, by praying. We read through the scriptures for that week. We search for a theme. Sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes the song's right there. Sometimes it's really hard. We'll ask the pastor what he's thinking about in the line of his sermon, if we can kind of match that. Sometimes what he tells us and on Sunday it ends up different. <laughs> Things change, you know, when you're preparing it message the spirit but um many times we'll choose a song and we go well this is probably okay it fits this scripture i don't know if it has anything to do with what the pastor's going to say or and we'll get up there and we'll do our song and then a little while later the pastor's giving the sermon and sometimes he'll just say a line from the song i mean it's practically like jaw dropping and we just look at each other and we say <laughs> There's your sign. <laughs> we feel a confirmation from the Spirit that we were led to choose that song. And it's, it's just a wonderful feeling to feel you're being led by God, to get that confirmation. You know you're in relationship. You know you're working with it. It's just wonderful. So those are the kind of things I want you to look for. That's, that's what I want to give you from Lent. It's a challenge to to look for signs. I have one other example. I'm not going too long. This one's got fun. 
I gotta show off my stuff. <laughs> when, when I first, after my walk, I was, I was looking at how God brings things for me to do in my life. My work, as I'm a dog groomer and I visit people in their homes, and I realize I've been doing that for a long time. <laughs> and God, it was already there. I mean, we were, we were called to look in our work and see where we might serve God. And I realized it's already there. What a gift. But um, one thing I did, I started something for fun. I was making a walking stick for Lloyd. He was having a little trouble getting around. I started, this is kind of fun. Carving on wood, I like that. I started collecting some wood, you know. And early in my revitalization of my walk with God, but I, I remember thinking, it's so wonderful to be working, to doing things for him, to touch others. Could he really be using me? I was still a little amazed. And I found a, a small tree. I like small trees. I like to dig up around and see what the roots have. Because when you flip them over, the roots have figures in them and certain things. And I got one nice shepherd staff on the side of a hill because it the, the main root would, tap root went right back into the hill, so it's a perfect staff. I dug back and chopped it off at kind of a gnarly place. Sanded it all off, you know, and I got up to the top and getting to the rough part, you know, up around the end, there's kind of a knob on it, and I'm sanding it. Thinking, Maybe I'll leave some of that rough part. I stepped back and I looked at it. And that's what I saw. You see that? Yeah. It was a snake head. I said, okay. There's your sign. <laughs> so, Let me see the sign again. I, I just I just want to tell you, I believe that if we if we look for them, there's signs everywhere. God is probably trying to speak to us every day. If we would get out of our busyness and be listening, we find that He's right there all along. And I'm, I'm going to challenge you to list for those signs. And especially signs where he's calling you to service. When you think, I haven't, I haven't called so-and-so in a while. Or you have a neighbor that you haven't checked on. Or you see somebody in the store that might need a lift, some encouragement. Act on that. Pray about it and see what God says. Because he'll confirm that you did a good thing and you can feel his love even stronger <laughs> if that's possible. So yeah, look for the signs and uh, walk with open eyes. All right. Well, I'd like you to join us in our final hymn, which is <laughs> where he leads me. I know I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, uh, as you can read, in him book 338. <laughs> Thank you.
eyes, ears, and hearts, Lord. Show us the way. As a young boy named Samuel once said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. <laughs> Go in peace. <laughs>